well, there are lots of stories about about Ernest um, here locally. Uh, one of my favorite stories is uh, when Ernest was riding in the barn, and this would have been before they finished it as the studio, and some kids from next door were peeking between the between the boards into the barn, and Ernest was not letting on that he that he saw, you know, he was trying to focus on or, or whatever and not letting on that he saw them. But they were staring at some skates on the wall behind him. And uh, finally he said, well, you can just borrow them if you want to, <laughs> and then handed them to them. Which a, a lot of the stories have to do with uh, with children in the community because the, the school was located immediately next door to the property. And they seemed to think of him as kind of a, a local local grouch, I guess, but uh, also I, I think it was a, a character he was putting on to, uh, uh, to have fun with them. The town has, uh, would, did say that they, they thought of him as something of a, of, a, of a hobo because he would come from Key West and here he was on vacation. And so he dressed like somebody would in Key West on vacation, so shorts and, you know, uh, whatever. Uh, you know, definitely no tie and jacket, right? And that was not the standard in, in Piggott at the time, and so that uh, definitely made him stand out. That, that kind of backfired on him once because he was in a, a bad wreck in Wyoming, and so he came back to Piggott to recuperate, and he looked awful. He was scruffy, he had a long beard, he had his arm in a sling, and looked really bad and he was walking up from the town square back up the hill to the Pfeiffer's home and uh, the school kids saw him and they thought he was one of the tramps that had gotten off the train and was coming up the hill looking for a handout so they started pelting him with snowballs and it was all he could do to block himself and get into the house before they completely knocked him down with their snowballs. He did go out hunting all the time with uh, his brother-in-law Carl and others in town. And the locals tell the story that uh, Hemingway refused to wear his glasses when they went hunting and so he had poor eyesight and was a poor shot a lot of times when they were hunting quail. And But he was so competitive that he refused to go in until he'd met his limit. So they would start shooting at the same time he was shooting to make him think that he was the one <laughs> that, was, that was killing the bird, and then they would do that until he got his limit. So that's, that's one story that the locals like to tell. Uh, another story is, one story about A Farewell to Arms is that it was made into a movie. Uh, and the movie, the 1932 version, which starred Helen Hayes and Gary Cooper, premiered in New York and in Piggott. And Ernest was, uh, the day of the premiere, Ernest was downtown at one of the local drugstores sitting at the counter, and he overheard these two women in town talking, and they were complaining because the movie that had been showing, which was Tarzan the Ape Man, had been taken off and wasn't running that night because they were running this new Hemingway Farewell to Arms, and they were complaining about it, and supposedly Hemingway got so mad that he came back and started drinking gin. <laughs> He didn't go to the premiere, uh, even though he was in town, because he also was in a fight with the studio over how they had wanted to end the movie. So um, he he really <laughs> was was sometimes was sometimes loved by the town of Piggott and sometimes hated. Um, I like to remind guests that when the town remembers this story, they're remembering it from. Uh, after the divorce, and where the you know it, where Pauline's family stayed a part of this community for for decades, local lore is is colored a particular way. <laughs>